Okay, so I've already made a video of this in action. So this is a, um, a rotary table, a vertex rotary table, four inch, um, and I made a conversion, put a stepper on, so remove the handle, made these fittings, um, put a coupling in the middle there. So basically the stepper runs the, um, the divider. And then this is the electronics divider, which looks absolute mess. Not very much uh, time taken in putting this together. I was desperate at the time to get it up and running, which was typical of me back six, seven, eight, ten years ago. Uh, but I've put it better together like it is, and to be honest, it works perfectly, so I've never really changed it. However, I'm currently making another one, so I thought I'd show a video of what you're actually getting there, because this is Steve Ward's from World of Ward, his divider. So that's the divider there. This is in a custom little box that I'm putting together. Um, so basically the divider, you buy it in a few different ways. You can either buy it as a PCB and all the components, and you solder it up, it's a little bit cheaper that way. Or Steve will provide you one that is all soldered up and it comes with the LCD all fitted in as well. So it comes with the LCD. And that is all that comes. So basically you get the PCB, all the soldered parts, the program pick, and the LCD and then you have to purchase your own keypad. You can either purchase one of these nice uh, keypads which basically have little inserts that slide in for the keys so you can customise them like I've done on this one and I'll show this working on my next project. Um, or uh, you can buy a very cheap, just let me grab that, you can buy a very cheap keypad like this. Um, I think I paid £3.50 for five of these so these are literally less than a pound each. Uh, you buy one of these and plug that in. Both work, no problem. The only thing, uh, you can't change the uh, keypad, so you'd have to put an overlay over the top, or if you're like me, just draw on the keys, okay? So that's uh, that's what you need to purchase. So you need to purchase your keypad, um, and then also you need to purchase your stepper driver. Um, it's not the best driver, it certainly wasn't the most expensive. But I've used one in my other machine and it's worked for about 10 years, so no problems there. And then, of course, you're going to need some sort of stepper motor. Um, then what you will need, the final piece, is your power supply. Now, I'm using here a laptop power supply, um, but obviously you could use whatever you want, providing it's a decent enough current. I think you'd have to just check the manual, but I think it allows anywhere between 20 volts and... In fact, I'm not going to say the, the top voltage just so I don't get anybody blowing theirs up, but check the manual. It does take a decent range, and of course, you're going to have to match the current with the current of your stepper driver. Okay, so dead simple, connecting it up. I'll just say it one more time. That's all from World Award. I think about £45. Keypad is three uh, less than a pound or £15 if you want a fancy one. The stepper driver, obviously, totally depends what you pay. I think something like this is probably about £40, £50, £60. Pound or you can pay a hundred and odd pound for a really good one. Um, and then your stepper motor, that's a really decent one, uh, brand new from CNC for you. And I think I paid about 35 pound for that. Okay, so in terms of connections, uh, there's not very many to be honest. You've got your power there, which is going straight to my uh, power supply, but ultimately power can go directly to the, uh, to the board. And it's got a nice little converter here, converting it to the correct voltage. So again, you can just run the, the the driver unit off exactly the same power supply that you're using for the stepper motor so no messing around there so that connects there and then quite simply there are literally other than plugging in the keypad here and all these keypads come with the same fitting that literally just pushes right on so you can't go wrong there and then there's three connections which are pulse uh, or step and then direction and then ground so direction step and ground and they're labeled on here as direction ground common and then pulse so the only one that's slightly labeled differently is the the pulse one which is pulse and step same thing okay so that's it literally they are all the connections made to the board and very simply now the only last thing i've got to do is connect power to here and of course the final thing is looking at the wiring diagram from a stepping motor which tells me which uh, wires to couple and which wires to put in a plus a minus b plus b B minus and we should be ready to go so let's get that connected um, I've connected the positive and negative of my uh, power supply I've connected wired the uh, stepper motor based on the pairings that are literally clearly labeled in the uh, manual so we're gonna flip this round now and I've not finished it so let's 
put that around. And we'll power up now. Hopefully it doesn't go bang. That's good. So I would advise you as soon as you've turned it on, check that you're actually getting something on the display. Turn it back off. I'm going to really struggle doing this with one hand, but then you need to hold down on the two number. So hold down number two, turn it back on. Oop. And there you go, it sets the keypad orientation. So that's it, you don't have to do anything, take your finger off, and the keypad's now all working. Okay, so now we're back to business, and the first thing you need to do, I'm not pretending I'm an expert with this, so I'll read the manual, but first thing you need to do is go and set up. You've got to set minimum and maximum speeds. These work for me, and I'm going to be honest, I'm sure there's far more people out there that understand this a lot better than me, so I'm not going to pretend I'm great at this. So these are the settings that work for me. If you try and move it too fast, then basically the motor starts stalling. So these settings work for me. Um, I do notice that for some reason the defaults are a little bit high for mine and I have to turn them down. So there's setting minimum speed, setting maximum speed. If you want it to go into any of these settings, click go, and then you literally have to type in the new numbers, click go, and it'll take you to the next one until it stops, freezes. Once it's frozen, you can move on to the next one. This page is the important page. Because what you have to do here is you have to calculate your gear ratio, uh, your ratios, uh, or steps per, revolu per, per revolution per 360. So um, I'll probably put some links and some information more in the description. But for example, if you just got this on single stepping, so 200 steps, um, and you're using a standard um, vertex rotary table like I was, that's one to 90 ratio. So it would be 200 times 90. If you're on micro stepping times two, so then you would double it 200 times two times the 90, etc. And you put in the number of steps per revolution in there. I'm doing something slightly different, so um, mine's not as high as it possibly will be in your case. But you do need to get that bob on, otherwise you're not going to obviously get back to the centre when you uh, when you ask it to rotate. So that's steps for per revolution. Swap rotation direction. If you, for whatever reason, if you are trying to turn it and you press go, then and it goes the wrong way, then change that uh, to the other way. So if you, basically, if it's not how you expect it, so if you want forward to go one certain way, i.e. clockwise or anti-clockwise, then swap that round, uh, and it will obviously go the other way. Uh, set backlash. You'll have to read the manual for more information on that. It's quite a complex one, but it does have some backlash compensation in the software. Swap clock pulse, or if you are having problems, which I always do when I first turn this on with these drivers, if you swap the clock pulse uh, and that will go to a different pattern, it will start working. So going high to low or low to high, I'm guessing it is for the uh, for, to run the stepper driver. And that is, is it the default profile? So you can have a number of profiles set in this so you can move it onto different ones. And that is pretty much, that's pretty much it. Okay, so finally, what are the functions? Um, I'm going to go over one. Uh, I'm going to go over them in order. I'll be honest. The first one I'm going to show you is jog, which is the one that I use most infrequently. But this is just like a manual jog. Um, and if I remember rightly, please again look at the uh, instruction manual. But ultimately, um, if we basically press this, so this button, they, it works like ten degrees. Uh, 1 degree, 0 0.1 degrees, 0 0.01 degrees of movement. So if I click the that one, which is going to be 10 degrees, it's going to move it 10 degrees. And 1 degree, and 1 degree, and 1 degree, and 0 0.1 degrees, 0 0.1 degrees, 0 0.01 degrees. Or is it not? I, I can't remember. You'd have to have a look at the manual. It's the one that I use least infrequently, and I'm guessing you'd only use that to jog to a rough location. Okay. Uh, and again, I'm showing you this on here where it's not connected actually to the index or the dividing head, so it's a bit difficult to see. So that's the first one, not say too much about that. Two um, is the most important one for me, it's the number of divisions. So if I want to divide my 360 and I want to drill five holes, for example, uh, zero, 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 0005, click go, and then click go forward. So I'm going to press forward, and there's the first division. And it will have gone a fifth of a rotation, and it will have gone two fifths of a rotation, etc., etc. Until when we get back to five or five, we're back at the starting point. So that's that one, and then we've got uh, degrees. That's a good one. So you can actually type in the number of degrees you want to move. Six five high five. We'll press that a bit quick. 
go and press forward and it will move to 65.55 degrees and then finally for continuous uh, good for various works basically you just press the direction here do you want it to go continuous one way or press the other way oh you've got to press cancel cancel and then go the continuous the other way and there you go so there is finally press cancel go back to the home page cancel there is a programming mode don't know too much about that and setup mode we've already been into so there you go it was quite a long video actually longer than i expected so hopefully that showed you how to uh, set up his uh, controller steve ward's controller and how to uh, look at some of the initial functions all right hope that helped cheers bye bye